Okay, g'day folks, welcome back. I'm down at Sventec Cranes today in their yard. They've graciously allowed me to use their 90 to go through a demonstration on how to set up the crane. We'll look at the bottom deck computer and then in a separate video, we'll look at the top deck as well. All right, so at the moment, the weather is a bit lousy, so we might get through the bottom deck today. And if it clears up, I'll go through the setup process of the bottom deck as well. However, if it keeps going the way it is, or we may need to make that off for another day. But we will go through the computer on the bottom deck and we'll have a look at the uh, what's involved in the bottom deck computer. All right, so just we'll jump in and we'll have a look at it. Okay, good day, folks. So here we are in the top deck. So when you do first get in the top deck of the lever, it can seem rather daunting when you look at all the flashing buttons and all the lights and everything else. So I'll just flick it around, we'll have a look, and then we'll go through what everything actually does in here. And once you get an understanding of it, it is actually quite easy to understand. All right, so we'll, all right. So I'll just do a quick run over so you can have a quick idea of what it actually looks like. All right, so here we go. All right. As you can see, there's a lot of buttons and when people first look at it, they think you need a pilot's license to drive it. But it's not quite that difficult. It is quite simple once you get an understand what each thing does. And the good thing about Lieber is across the board, the bottom decks are pretty much identical. Sometimes they may have an extra button here or there, um, but they'd be specific for certain cranes. So, but across the board, they're pretty much identical in what they do. All right, so remember this is an older model and we will look at a newer model um, in the next couple of weeks. All right, so I'll flip it back over and we'll go. We'll start from the left hand side and we'll work our way around the bottom deck to see exactly what we do. All right, so, all right, so starting over here. All right, so basically same as your car. All right, you've got your indicators up and left and right. All right, you've got your wipers, which would come in handy today if you were driving on the road and you got your horn on the end here. All right, high beam, there, all right. Coming up to the dash, all right, over here. Okay, we've got our fuel level, we've got our temperature, we've got our oil, we've got our battery, all right. Over this side, the three ebbs. So your ebbs, they've got to be, um, full before you can travel anywhere. If these red lights are on, then it's not going to allow you to do too much at all. All right, then you've got your add blue, etc. beside it. All right, coming around. All right, now over here, this left stalk here does a few things. So you've got different levels of an engine retarder. So as you're coming up to a hill, if it's only a slight hill, to save your brakes, you might just engage your retarder. If it's a bit steeper, push it down a bit further. Now, on some of the older models, if the retarder is still active, it's not gonna allow you to get any accelerator. So, a lot of times, a lot of times, someone will jump in, they'll go to drive off, and they'll think there's something wrong with it. Um, usually the first thing to do, just check that retarder is all the way off. This tapping backwards and forwards, what that does is that will allow you to change your gears manually if you've got it in a manual mode as well. So that'll just let you change the gears there as well. All right. Then you got your speedo. All right, got your kilometers and oh, got your kilometers and down there. All right. Now we look at the cockpit. This is a bit that confuses everyone. All right. All right. So we start at the top here. All right. So we've got our reverse, neutral, and drive. So if you've got your foot on the brake, all right. If you press drive. All right release the handbrake and away you go okay we just pop that back into neutral all right now down here is so you can change gears manually if you need to all right so you go up a gear down a gear just to change those gears over all right you've also got turtle mode here so if i'm going to move the crane on side i've still got my counterweights on all right i typically have it in turtle mode and I can change gears manually, either there, or I could also change them here as well. Okay, as we go down, all right, so we've got P1 here, all right, so what that does is that'll 
change the brightness of your screen. All right, so depending how you like it set, all right, that'll adjust the brightness for you. Okay, now, when you see these ones along here with this line, anything connected along this line here, this little hand needs to be uh, activated to operate any of these buttons here. All right, so you've got your suspension up on the front and then up on the rear, down on the front, down on the rear. All right, this one here puts you into travel mode. This one is your suspension lock. Okay, then you have across here all your different steering components. So you can pretty much tell by looking at the diagrams which axles it's going to turn and when. Now, I don't typically use them a lot, but if I am going to be mobiling around a really tight area, I might go into two and it just gives you that bit more swing on the back end of the crane to get around tighter corners. All right, and you've also got crab steering here which is great if you do need to move sideways in there that little bit. All right, now coming down the bottom, all right, so this one is if you want to manually adjust your rear um, axles, all right, you can activate that one and use these two buttons to do it manually, left or right. Okay, so keeping in mind you do need that on. So at the moment, the crane's lowered and the suspension is locked. All right, so if I was to put that into road travel, all right, first thing you need to do is unlock it. So you'll press the little hand there and hit that, the light will go out. And then you can hit this green one here, all right. And you wait until everything stops flashing, or well, everything starts flashing, and you'll know that it's all set for traveling on the road. All right, so. All right. You see they're all flashing, so that's all good to go. Keep in mind, this um, suspension lock, if you're traveling on the road, that's got to be turned off. All right. Now, from there, you'd put it into drive, travel away. If, when you rock up to site, the first thing you need to do is to drop your suspension and then lock your axles out. All right, so back on there all right so try and do this so you can see it so i've got, got my one finger on the hand all right then i can come down on the front then i can come down on the rear all right once they're both down all right Hit that suspension lock button and there we go. Now it's all ready to get set up underneath. All right, now down to the bottom half here. All right, then we've got our different heater and air conditioning controls there. Got our lights over here. So you've got your hazard lights, got your beacons, got your fog lights, got your park lights and got your headlights. So your headlights are your main ones you need to use there. All right, and when you're traveling on the road, you need to have that flashing beacon on as well. All right, so, and down the bottom here are heated mirrors. So, cold days in Melbourne, comes in very handy to heat your mirrors up as well. All right, so we'll keep moving around. All right, down here we have our handbrake. All right, so don't forget to release that before you start driving. Okay, then we have our ignition key. Now this, one here is for changing the power from the bottom cab to the top cab before you get in there. So turn the key off, flip that over, and that'll allow you to operate the top cab. But before you do that, what you do need to do is to set up the outriggers. So to set up, to set up the, up oh, here we go. So to set up the outriggers, it still needs to be set on the bottom deck because they're obviously on the bottom half. All right, so before you get out, make sure that's still on the bottom deck leave the engine running, you jump out, and you can then start operating the outriggers. All right, once the outriggers are out, then you'd come back in here, turn the key off, flip the switch over to the top cab, and then climb in the top cab and get fired away with that one. All right, so that's just a quick basic rundown on 
the lower deck of a lever. Now they are pretty much all the same. So whenever you jump in one, they're gonna look pretty much exactly the same. Newer ones may have a couple of new buttons, uh, new ones with the Bluetooth controller that's built into the dash. And when we do get onto a newer crane, we'll have a look at that and we'll go through that as well. All right, so I hope you get something out of that. It's still actually pouring down outside there. So I'll go through the actual setup of it at a later stage as well. All right, but that's the bottom deck covered and hope that helps. And I'd just like to say thanks again to Paul Sventek for allowing me down here to have a go through this crane. All right, thank you. And I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.